Macarion to Stokes, who's onside. Wagner! Here's Sims to put serve this from Southampton. They could finish the job here. It's Shane Long. Right, John, how are you doing, sexy? Um, Tom is sat opposite me and he's looking beautiful, so <laughs> say hi, Tom. Hi, John, how are you? I saw you on Saturday. Did you? Yeah, oh. John came all the way down to London for my stag. Oh my, you, oh my fucking God, you had a stag. How yeah. are you still alive? I feel like I'm going to die, to be honest. <laughs> you don't want to hear this, do you? Sorry, I don't know why we're talking about this. We'll save this for... <laughs> pre- okay, right, we're going to go for it. Okay, hold on. Right, well, welcome back to the Saints FC podcast. This is your FA Cup special, if that's even a thing. Well, it is a thing now, isn't it? We're going to talk um, further afield. We're going to talk about Everton a little bit later, the uh, future clash at St. Mary's against the mighty Marco Silva's band of brothers. And whatever, you know, the scumbags. Let's just say scumbags. But I'm sat here opposite the one and only Tom Parker and we are getting ready for the showdown against Derby County the mighty Rams the mighty Rams and we haven't said Frank Lampard's Derby County because we're not idiots he'll be there five minutes and he'll go somewhere else yeah exactly oh god right so um can we just do something that basically highlights what I was saying earlier today to a to a friend on Twitter um Youth, youth academy players at Southampton. Tonight's lineup suggests that Harson Hootle is going f- f- like full bore. Yeah, it looks. And mental. I like it. Yeah. I like. I mean, bear in mind that the game on Saturday, two one away at Leicester, we had to win. I think we ended with what five or six academy players. Yeah, on the pitch. Uh, so you know, he obviously trusts them. You know, you look at Hoyt, established Dutch international, he ain't getting anywhere near this team. Yeah. Um, so you trust them hugely. Um, yeah, and what we've got tonight, we've got Jack Stevens, who I guess is a youth player, but you wouldn't really call him that anymore. But two starts, Ramsey, obviously we saw him against Man City, where he actually did pretty well. Yeah. Against it, uh, against Sterling, you know, all things considered. I know, and, um, and Barnes is on the bench, right? Barnes is on the bench. You've also got a first start for Tyreek Johnson. Yeah. Uh, I don't know much about him. I won't even pretend to. I haven't got a clue. Um, but, you know, James Ward Prowse keeps his place. Good. Out of nowhere, I must add. Yeah, but, you know, he's been he, he's been more aggressive, hasn't he? Everything, yeah, he's been more in people's faces. What you need from him. He's, how long have we been saying he's too nice? I know. He, you're right. You're absolutely right. And I've been not necessarily lambasting him, but I haven't been his... No, I love the guy. But I... I on the pitch, it's just it's it is a bit of a quandary. So he he obviously he turned out. Oh my god, his performance against Leicester and Chelsea, two fantastic performances. So, um, so and, yeah, yeah. Who else is who's up front so, for us? Tonight? So, got, so, so let's just <laughs> remember team got Angus Garning goal. Okay, which good. We like good. Cedric playing at left back. Yeah. Um, Stevens and Vestergaard at the back, which I like. You know, Stevens not great in the air, so you need Vestergaard alongside him. Yeah, Tyreek. No, sorry, Kane Ramsey, a right back. Yeah, exciting. And then exciting. we go to the midfield, Oriel Romeo, who's been like a man oh, transformed, isn't he? Getting Sexy in there like a going. dirty weasel. And uh, then we've got Ward Prowse, Johnson and Armstrong, and then up front, Elianusi and the goal machine himself, Shane Long. Yeah, I mean, we lit- that's where it ends for me. I'm like, oh, Elianusi, okay. Uh, Shane Long, yeah. okay, you know, I mean, he's had, a really, he's had one good game. Uh, this this season, uh, maybe that's harsh, but he's had one complete good game against Leicester. Yeah. I would say that's fair enough. Um, Wait, won do, a penalty. Yes, yeah. scored a goal. So we're obviously we're, we're referring back to our, our, our massive away victory against Leicester City, which is possibly the. I mean, I know for a lot of people the tide maybe turned against Chelsea nil nil away from home. Which is freaking amazing result. Great result. But the less the Leicester result where we actually converted into three points Shane Long how did you feel about that 
He did a mate. He, Sorry, I was, that wasn't to Shane Long. That was to Tom Parker, obviously. Oh, well, like, yeah. he he did exactly what Shane Long does, doesn't he? Like it was almost like a stereo for this, for winning the the penalty. It was almost stereotypical Shane Long, and the goal was the most archetypal Shane Long goal of all time. Like, yeah, bullied one defender into making a mistake. Bullies a second defender into making a mistake. Does a shot which probably might not have gone in, but Shh. but then you know, but it's good enough to worry Schmeichel. Yeah, yeah. And also, no. what a time to score! Forty-five minutes. We've just gone down to ten men. I know it was beautiful. Doesn't get it? any more important than that. And, and and yeah, it wasn't going in, and Schmeichel's hand deflected it in. But but still, you know, it, it it's good enough for me. It counts. It counts. And Shane, you know what? I bet you Shane Long when he got on the coach, he's not complaining. <sighs> he's, so, I mean, he's such a he's. He, I, I definitely think he's still a championship player. Like I think he's lost what that that edge yet. Yeah, fine, you know he he has, and he, he's. I don't know if he's going to get it back. We'll see. I, I I want to be proved wrong here massively, and this is just a personal view. Obviously, we don't at say at Saints FC podcast. We all have our own <laughs> individual thoughts. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I think he still needs to go down a level championship and get that zip and goal scoring and all that, all that back, all that pizzazz back. And, and we need to get an actual proven goal scorer in that can really make a difference. But at this level, at the moment where we are chasing down, harassing defenders, there's no one else like it. No. And I think as well, maybe this team plays to his strengths a little bit because, you know, the game... Uh, the, the first game against Derby, you saw Charlie Austin, who was terrible. The problem is, I think, if we have Charlie Austin, who is slow and lumbering and a big lump, and Shane Long, we're kind of caught between two types of striker. And Charlie Austin doesn't have the quality, mm. maybe, to hold the ball up and to, you know, the movement that Shane Long needs. Yeah. You know, maybe like a Pella had. Oh, but, stop, stop. Yeah, oh, my God. Hallowed be his so name. Sexy. But this team here, you know, El Yanusi and Long up front, both smaller guys, both really quick, both can turn, try and go past people. Yeah, that's, and, uh, you know, if Saints play to that game tonight, yeah. if that's what we try and do, then, you know, with Ward Prowse, we've got good balls in midfield, you know, good, good balls in midfield. Good balls. <laughs> Good, bo- good balls in his midfield. Wife, hey. is pregnant, so hey, what's going on here? Good balls. Um, but I, I would, I would say, look, we're, we are probably about five minutes till kick off. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back at half time. Uh, obviously against Derby County, FA Cup. Uh, hopefully, and we will be two or three nil up, and we will be absolutely overjoyed. Um, so look, we're going to say goodbye for now, but we will be back at half time. Okay. So hang tough, and actually. Predictions for halftime score? Uh, I think prediction halftime score are two 0 Saints. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go one nil Southampton Football Club from Southampton. Okay, adios. Speak to you in a minute. Take care. Right. Well, um, I said we wouldn't be that long, and and we we weren't. On on that note, Shane Long injured at the end of the first half. That's a bit of a worry, wouldn't you say, Tom? How many actual strikers do we have now? I uh, got one, which is a, a Nathan Redmond shaped one, which is you know whilst he's been on a good run of form, he's not a striker in the traditional sense. So, yeah, interesting. <laughs> no over Femi, no Hughes, no no Austin. Sorry, yeah, no Long probably. No, you know Ings doesn't seem to be able to play more than sort of two or three games in a row. Yeah, uh, it's you know no Gabby. Obviously, it's all looking a bit hairy. I mean. I the only I think literally the only saving grace we have right now it is the transfer window. Um, obviously, it's that premium window of January, so therefore you just add an, ox- an extra ten million on top of any player. There's, so, no, there's no one good available because yeah. if you think about it, anyone good is not you know clubs don't let good players leave unless there's a problem. Yeah, but okay. Transfers aside, we might talk about that quickly at the end uh, because it is January, but. Let's start with the first half against Derby because it's FA Cup special. It is. Well, how, well, how do you, how do you feel we started? We started well. Mm. Uh, we really tore into them from first few kicks. It was amazing. Um, but then since then, Derby have grown more in confidence. They look more like the Premier League team than we do. <laughs> yeah, don't say that um, because it's true. And as football fans, we are obliged to lie through our teeth. <laughs> I, I I think it, it, we're we're in a situation here where Derby were we we looked like we were going to press them into the ground and they out they literally just took it round corners and yeah. bent it round bends and they've just completely out outshone our press and that the offside goal that was you know the VAR goal was disallowed what, what can you talk us through that 
I can't. Madness. I mean, for me, I mean, we've watched it on the replay. It looks, it looks onside. And if it's not onside, yeah, maybe his foot is off. It's, it's strange because part of me obviously thinks, yeah, great, Saints didn't concede. But part of me almost thinks, a, God, what's that going to do to the game? It's a spectacle for, for mm. people in the ground. If that's what it's going to come down to, yeah, what's it going to do for players? You know, this stopping and starting can't be good. You know, getting everyone back to the halfway line and then yeah. two minutes later, it seems to be at least two minutes to... And I think also, like, we're talking about the infant, infant boy, tiniest, tiniest little goddamn... Little, what was his, yeah. It was probably his boot, if that. Yeah. And I was outraged. None like, of the Saints players asked for it, did they? No, no, no one. It was a goal. It looked like a beautifully worked goal. Yeah. And the only reason I'm a bit annoyed about it, outraged, is the fact that that could easily go against us. And that, Ooh. as every football fan has to take on, they have to appreciate. Well, it, that, you it know, will go against us. Because yeah. you think tonight now, like Frank Lampard gets his players in there and he says to them, you've been cheated. Mm. Now you, you've scored against them once, go and do it again. Mm. And they've looked, like you said, they've passed around our press. When it's really come down to it, Saints have not had the quality on the ball from the players you'd expect. There's been a few very wayward passes from our better, more cultured players like Cedric Armstrong. Mm, surprising um, from Armstrong, yeah. yeah. Um, but if we look for positives, James Ward Prowse has been excellent. Yes, and certainly, like I, I, I think I, I said to you during the game that he, he seems to be, uh, as soon as he receives the ball, he's looking forward. He's making that forward pass as a yeah. stopping the play and passing it back all to the side. And uh, I know you highlighted Johnson on the left as well. Johnson, yeah, looks good, doesn't he? He looks getting that ball in early. We've just seen the Shane Long miss again. Um, what so a there cross are, from what Johnson. A cross. So there are positives, but ultimately we need to find a way to deal with Derby because yeah. Derby look very, very good. And if it isn't the press, how are we going to change this up? I don't know. Without we, we, Shane Long. We need to show the quality we've got. But again, you know, we've spoken about Elwin Nusi looks lost out there. God, it's like he's won a competition. Every other player I've noticed on the pitch, uh, you know, Stevens looks good in the challenge. He's he played a, a beautiful ball that up to Will Prowse. Will Prowse, uh, probably our, you know, our, our sequence of the game where Stevens goes in hard, wins it back, pass to James Will Prowse. Prowse to the left, and Johnson with that beautiful, beautiful cross. Pass, yeah. Um, but really, after that, we were, we were str- I'm, I'm struggling to think when we actually yeah, we had controlled a, the we game. Had a few chance. That was one we had Stevens header from the corner, but we've not really put our foot on it as a Premier League team and been like, look, we you yeah. know, we've got this. And I think too few of our good players have been missing. I think mm. El well. I say good, but El God, yeah. you know, needs to make an impression. He's not making an impression. Um, you wonder, I mean, if, if in the second half, you know, who are we going to see? I mean, El Yunusi might not last. Uh, I think they've got to game. get him out. I think they've got they've got to get players like El Yunusi out of the team, um, out, out of the club. It's going as well because Sims was on the bench on Saturday, so you'd have thought maybe we could have seen... Well, you never, Josh, who's you the, never know. The boy crush of the podcast. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly, massive crush. But I, I think, look, we'll, we'll draw a line under it now. We'll be back at the end of the uh, the game in in its entirety. But I mean, I would say if we're going to change anything, we've only got babies on the bench. So, well, we said you said two nil. I said. I can't remember what I said. I think you I said, said one nil at half time. So we're going to revise your. I'm well. No, oh, blimey, Charlie. I mean, yeah. I'd just say, God, you know what? I reckon this could be one all. Like, yeah. You know, I think... we look very sloppy. Even like Romeo, it looks very sloppy. It, it looks. I wonder what I would say is, it looks like they've surprised us a little bit by their quality. Mm. And maybe get them in and Ralph will kind of slap them around a bit. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah, get the rabbit, the rabbit slap. You yeah, know? get those ears out. Get all hairy on them. That's a reference to rabbits, not like he's got a hairy back or anything. Anyway, I'm sure he's got a smooth, lovely back. <laughs> hey, Ralph. Okay, we will see you at full time. Ciao, ciao. Okay, right. Well, welcome back. We are now currently live with BBC BBC One because Brexit's on BBC Two. Um, it's the uh, it's the penalty shootout against Derby County for a chance to play Accrington Stanley in the FA Cup fourth round. How are you feeling about this, Tom? I, I feel bad. I don't I don't like it. Uh, you know, I need to be at home, so I'm gutted that we're playing penalties. Also, what are we doing? Two 0 up, complete control. 
and we let in two soft goals. It's exactly like the first game. Yeah, it's well, almost what, like a joke. Why are we here? I mean, it's absolutely, it's it's a killer. I cannot believe oh, we're in this position. You know what's going to happen as well. You know that Derby are going to win. Yeah, because we're, we're, I'm just quite anxious to know who's go, who's, who are going to be our penalty takers. So I think Warprowse. Yeah, War Warprowse. Romeo. Romeo. Uh, El Yanisi. Yeah. I think you'll see Vestergaard. Yeah. And maybe Romeo. Oh well, I mean, it's it's it, it, in for me the excitement comes from the opportunity to play to go away and play against Accrington Stanley, one well, that, of the greatest teams. That's what it's all about. So let's. Who's this? Oh. This is a, a Derby a farm hand up first. A farm <laughs> farm hand splitting Derby County player steps up against Gunn and scores. Scores comfortably. Yeah, that's top. the bloke who could barely walk about three minutes ago. Yeah, he's a cramp. Funny that. Oh, Frankie Lampard's got a lovely little shimmery, shiny, greasy he's got, forehead. He's got one of those sort of slightly hairy faces that <laughs> um, thin girls have as well. Yeah, he's beautiful though. He is. He's handsome, such man. a handsome man. It's a great penalty. Um, so who's up first for okay. Saints oh, exciting oh, times God. He, he James Wall Prowse scored a penalty last week of course Good and work. he smashed it into the top top left is he going to do it again he's played 120 minutes tonight let's see if that's impacted him same way brilliant mm, goal great goal Corner. maybe it's a better penalty than the penalty last week do you think so I think the penalty last week against Leicester was like further into the t- into the corner up into the corner and no it's not like that was to the middle part. Yeah, Sorry, but I halfway disagree, up. but oh, really? the thing is, the keeper got a touch on the one last week. Okay. The keeper's not getting a touch on this. Who's this? This, this is farmhand number two for Derby. Arr. No, do they, we don't do R, do we, for Derby? No, they're okay. Oh. And it's another great penalty. You know what's going to happen? This is going to go right down to the wire. We end up like, and they'll just will take start on. the game again. We'll have to be here all night. If they started the game again... I, I think I would prefer a no deal Brexit to start in this game again. Yeah, I'd, I mean, the economic, social, and cultural consequences of a no deal Brexit are pretty bad, but then also I told my missus I'd be home at 10 o'clock. Yeah. So, mm. oh God, Nathan. Nathan Redmond steps up here against the chiselled eyebrows of the Derby County. He's been very greedy. Oh, here we go. I don't fancy this. Oh, he's, yeah, he's blazed, blazed it wide. It wide. And, and that's that then, isn't it? That has got to be that. He has, he has looked ropey in the extra time period. He's been really selfish. It's he's, a terrible penalty. And he's, he's, he's really blasted that really far and wide. I'd say that's about four foot wide of the right hand, of the, oh, left, of the keeper's left. This is an awful way to spend a Wednesday. No offence, yeah. Pirate, but... Uh, just for you listeners, uh, we are actually round the pirate residence, uh, Sydenham, with a fire on the go. The only thing keeping us warm right now. Oh, oh it's another great penalty from Derby. Just, you know the what? They've just looked cooler than us, haven't they? They've looked. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty good opportunity whilst we go out of this cup tie. Oh, I can't believe just, this. Just to talk about when we were 2 0 up, cruising, absolute cruising. Long comes off. And li- literally, we open the door to Derby, and we are now in a penalty shootout. And now we've got what Vestergaard to to take a penalty. I mean, he will miss because he's centre back, and he'll either that or he'll take the keeper's head off. Yeah. Oh, he's oh, scored. It's a rocket of a penalty. I don't understand Redmond taking a penalty. Well, because he's a great goal. Because he can. He's. I can. Why can't you understand it? Because penalties are all about cool heads. Redmond is. Like clearly, someone who loses his rag every minute of every game. And he, yeah, and he, I mean, so why give him such an important? Why give him the second penalty? Because he's a senior player. You know the answer yeah. to that. You're being an, a, pro, a provocateur. An agent provocateur. An <laughs> agent pro- provocateur. Oh, we we oh, should. Oh my god, this is horrible, isn't it? Going out. Going to, out to Derby in the third round. Yeah. Oh, it's another good penalty from Derby. I'll give it to our goalkeeping coaches. Angus Gunn has gone the wrong way on every single penalty so far. <laughs> yeah, fair play. I mean, yeah, I, I just wanted to opportunity before the shootout is over to just how we how we let Derby back into I the game. I don't even want to know from, how we did. From, from the free kick, their first goal back, I just thought every single time we've been 2-0 up this season, oh, we've... Target. Uh, and Matthew Here Target is stepping up to take a penalty. The nice boy in the school. 
He oh. scored. It's a great penalty. So you go straight down the middle there. Yeah. And I think this is where we are. This is what this is what the price you pay when you, you are 2 0 up, cruising against the championship oh. side, and you open the door, you let the team in, and and then guess what? You're playing an extra half an hour and a penalty shootout when on Saturday you were playing Everton. Uh, Everton and at the, home. the irony is that we're gonna sort of go out of this penalties <laughs> having knackered half of our first <laughs> team for no point whatsoever. And the guy from Game of Thrones to score the winning penalty. For Dobbs. And he does it yeah. no There you go. There you go. Job done. Um, so I suppose on that note, we'd, <sighs> we'll just say um, thanks for tuning in for this FA Cup special. Um, we here at Southampton uh, FC podcast value your listenership. And oh, we're just watching Derby County, yeah, basically. Just Tom's in tears. It's it's um, another four years. Oh, no, it's not the World Cup. Um, yeah. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll, we'll probably be back soon to talk about the Everton match and how that went down. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's going to be a completely different setup. We'll be way more professional. Our players won't be exhausted uh, and pathetic. Unlike tonight. Oh, God. Is that nasty? Is that a nasty thing? To say? It's probably a nasty thing to say. I mean, like, Saints need to... They've learned a lot tonight because ultimately a lot of these players haven't been good enough. They've been yeah. outfought by younger, more hungry players from Derby who, when it has really mattered, have had more class. Yeah. And a lot of our players, Armstrong, Romeo, certainly Elianusi, have not been good enough tonight. Yeah. And I think that's shown in the end result. And, you know, you can't really argue that Derby didn't deserve to win that. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, absolutely. I completely agree. I will probably leave it on that note and hopefully we can um, turn the ship around, get things back on track against Everton. But in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this random show. And if you feel like leaving a review of the podcast because it's such a, a fantastic thing to do and support us, then please do so on iTunes and catch us on Twitter. I am on pirate underscore ST. Tom is uh, Tom Parker, I believe, on Twitter. Tom Parker, great one. Uh, Tom Parker, 81, and of course you can find us on Saints FC Podcast. And if you have any emails, please feel free to do uh, reach out and contact us, which is the saintsfc at gmail.com. Oh no, it's not. It's saintsfcpodcast at gmail.com. God, I'm such a bad interim pirate. Anyway, guys, look after yourselves. Thanks for tuning in. Au revoir.